Hey, everybody. Jordan here coming to you from Flag Pond, Tennessee. Flag Pond, Tennessee, Eastern Tennessee, about 40 minutes to Asheville, North Carolina. I was in Asheville today. And um, I actually, about a year ago, bought 10 acres. I haven't told too many people about this. I bought 10 acres in Eastern Tennessee that has a nationally registered waterfall on it. And you can't, I don't know that you can hear it. I've got the window open right here, but just down below my deck here, it's just a tiny place, 400 square feet on 10 acres. But right down the little ravine here is a beautiful stream that flows through the property. And it's coming from a waterfall. Or it's actually flowing down to a waterfall. And so I decided to come here. I've never stayed here before. I decided to come and, and uh, stay for four nights. So I was here last night for the first time sleep with the windows open, got the nice sound coming in. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's just like one of those little sound machines, only real. And so, um, yeah, how about that? Marianne, how's it going? Your sister lives there, yeah. So I'm meeting up with D Dave Wilkerson on Wednesday in Asheville, and we're gonna have lunch. And uh, I've also got some other friends here. So th that's what I'm doing tonight, <laughs> this week. Working from here tomorrow, I'll be working all day from my deck here. And I'm going, which is like, you guys have heard me talk about this before. You know, like I try and design my life like a vacation. That's just my choice. Not everybody does that. Um, but that's the way that I've chosen to live my life is to design my life as a vacation so that every day is Saturday. And I enjoy working. It's not work to me it's fun and so sometimes i'll be working out on the deck looking out into the forest or at the beach and for me that's like a saturday it's like vacation so and sometimes like today i took most of the day off but tomorrow i'll be working all day and then wednesday i'll take half the day off so i want to share and, and anyone can do that it's just a life by design you know you decide how you you want your life to look you decide how you want it to look and understand that in every moment, you have a multitude of choices of how you spend your time. You know, it's not like you don't have any choice. You have a multitude of choices. You can choose to lay in bed. You can choose to get in your car and go on a drive. You could choose to go to the gym and work out. You could choose to contact some people. Uh, you could choose to send some cards. Every moment we have an infinite number of choices we can make. And I've just chosen to make choices. Hey, Tom Chenault. I've just chosen to make choices that would allow me to feel like I'm on vacation every day. And I feel like if I'm in that state, then I can be a better presence for other people. And if you're in that state, you can be in a, you can be a better presence for other people as well. So with that, tonight I want to talk about um, an idea. Somebody put this in the chat, or a few people put it in the chat. You want to go into your meetings, all your meetings, with a posture of learning, not a posture of getting. You want to go into your meetings with a posture of learning, not with a posture of getting. So I want to share some things that I've learned um, on my journey. Number one... People are open to help. There are lots of people around you that will help you if you ask them for help. And so keep that in mind as you're just out in the world and you'll learn a lot of things that will help you if you ask. So people are open to help and you'll learn a lot of things if you ask. And an introduction can lead to a strong affiliate. And a little side note to that is Introductions are much easier than cold contacts. Introductions are frictionless. Cold contacts can produce friction. But when somebody introduces you to somebody that they know, there's already a basis of relatedness between you and them because you both know the same person. Does that make sense? So an introduction can lead to all kinds of opportunities. So, and again, people are open to help. And if you ask, you'll learn a lot of things. 
So you want to, in every meeting, every meeting you have, you want to set, you want to be in control of the set. You set the stage for a productive interaction. So it's almost like you're setting the stage. And so what I like to do in the first part of that is build some rapport. So I'm gonna look for some commonality. I'm gonna ask questions. I'm gonna listen. Uh, I'm going to try and connect at a personal level, find out something about them, uh, compliment them sincerely, only sincere compliments. Um, if it came as a, as your if your meeting came as a result of an introduction, uh, you know, from somebody that you know and care about, you know, let you let them know what you appreciate about appreciate about the person that introduced you, and they probably feel the same way. Look for that commonality. Look for some kind of a basis for relatedness. But that rapport building is so important. So you're going to set the stage. Number two is you want to go over what you want to cover. Like you might say you know, what I want to do is I want to get to know you better, learn a little bit more about your business, and then share a little bit with you about what we do. And if there's a fit, we can talk about going forward. So again, start with rapport building, then set the stage by going over what you want to cover. And then three is very simply, all this stuff is so simple. It's so basic. Ask, listen, and take notes. And it's okay to ask the question, who do I need to meet? Can you make an introduction? So you're gonna ask, listen, and take notes. Learn about them. Learn about their business. Learn about what they're interested in. Learn about what their goals and objectives are. Learn about what their dreams are. And, and so when you do that, when you ask, it doesn't. you don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but a meeting like this could easily go for 15 minutes, maybe 20 max. But then at some point, you're going to be sharing a little bit about what you do. And then you're going to ask, can, do, do, who do I need to meet? Can you make an introduction? Again, this is the most powerful process for engaging in productive conversations that I've ever seen that can lead to growth. And I discovered this process in my conversation. So three things. Number one, seek advice and ideas. Number two, ask for introductions. And number three, if it makes sense, suggest collaboration. You know, I had this epiphany at an, a joint venture retreat that I was on in Cabo. And I started seeing that when you collaborate with people, you know, you're doing things for them, they're doing things for you. You bring certain things to the table, they bring certain things to the table. I started thinking about Johnny Depp and Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck was a savant guitarist, has been. It, you know, his audience was just getting older and older and they were dying and, you know, disappearing and he couldn't draw a crowd. And he used to be in the 70s and 80s. He used to be, he draw thousands of people, but he be, kind of became a has been. And then there's Johnny Depp and Johnny He's not a great musician at all. But, and by the way, Jeff Beck um, just not that long ago passed away, but Johnny um, was not a great musician, but Johnny can draw crowds, right? So Johnny and Jeff got together and, you know, Jeff brought class to Johnny's act and some talent and Johnny brought the audience. So that was a collaboration. That was a joint venture. Well, there are people out there that have an audience. And if you follow this simple system, seeking advice, ideas, asking for help, asking for introductions, and pos su suggesting a possible collaboration. There's things you bring to the table if you're connected with promptings, which you all are. You bring things to the table. You bring connections to the table that they don't have. People that you could introduce to them. And they bring possibly an audience to the table and maybe some skill sets, maybe some, some, um, they bring connections, they bring skill sets, they bring talent. So you start by deciding who you want to meet. In, in 2004, I decided I wanted to meet the leadership at BNI. I made a conscious decision that I wanted to meet the leadership and I worked my way one person at a time through introductions 
to the top leadership in BNI. And I did that over time. And then I decided that I wanted to meet realtors. And so I started meeting realtors and I said, who else do I need to meet? And who else do I need to meet? And how can I help you? And tell me more about what you do and let's see if we can work together, collaborate. So when you decide who you wanna meet, you can then go where they go, right? So once you've decided who you wanna meet, in advance, you decide it, maybe it's like one group or two groups or three groups. I'll give you some examples here in a minute. We're, we're not gonna go probably for the full 30 minutes tonight, but I, I think this is just a really powerful, simple system. Drop some of these things in the comments, these tips and that I'm uh, bringing up here, like seek advice ideas, ask for introductions, suggest collaboration. And then think about that Johnny Depp, Jeff Beck, scenario that I just gave you. So when you decide who you want to meet, you can then go find those people. You go where they go. About a couple of years ago, I decided I wanted to meet online marketers and people that do joint ventures. And I started asking around, who do you know? Who do you know that does joint ventures? Who do you know that's an online marketer? And the result of that is I made hundreds and hundreds of new friends, which are new connections, and signed up many, 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 many customers and affiliates over the past couple of years, probably in the range of uh, 50 to 60 new affiliates in the past two years. Now you can pick any group that you think would be beneficial. So here's some examples. I'm just gonna throw, drop these in the comments as I throw them out, drop these in the comments. Coaches, ladies coaches, realtors, real estate brokers, online marketers, real estate wholesalers, uh, stay-at-home moms, uh, people who teach LinkedIn, people who work their business on LinkedIn, people who teach people how to do Facebook advertising, people who sell leads, teachers, single moms, pick a, cat, pick a couple of categories that you relate to and then be intentional about finding those people by going where they hang out, both online and offline. Authors, public speakers, authors that do personal development, people who teach others to publish eBooks, podcasters. Somebody could make a living in our business just meeting and getting to know podcasters and asking for their advice and ideas female podcasters, male podcasters, pick a category, pick a class, and then decide that you're gonna spend time going places and getting to know those people. So pick a group that you think you'd have instant rapport with and then pursue meeting those people. So what do you do when you meet them? Four things, be curious. Number two, ask for help. Number three, look for ideas, collaborate on ideas. And number four, make it an inquisition, a conversation to learn, not to get. A conversation to learn, not to get. And make sure, especially if you're online or offline, take notes. That shows that you're really engaged and really interested. So do you see that when you know who you're wanting to meet, you're able to go find those people? once you know who you want to meet. So for example, if you go into a lineable saying, I just want to meet everybody, just like I think Ivan Meisner talks about this. If you go to meet everybody, you'll meet nobody. You want to go knowing who you want to meet because everybody knows those people. So if you told every person you met through a lineable, I want to meet online marketers as an example, I'm just using that as an example. If, if you went on to Alignable and said that, now everybody knows online marketers and they're gonna introduce you to those people and those introductions are way easier to handle than cold contacts. So you can search for these people on LinkedIn, you can search for them on Instagram and Facebook, you can ask friends for referrals, you can join meetups, you can join Alignable, in per, you can do in-person retreats, you can do masterminds, training seminars, all these different kinds of things. So honestly, like I've done a lot of these trainings, uh, more than I can even count, 52 a year for 20 years. Somebody add that up and put it in the chat. 
50 a year, approximately 50, let's say 50 a year for 20 years. That's a thousand trainings that I've done since we've started. And I'll be honest with you, this one, this information is probably in the top five of those thousand. That's how powerful and, and how important I think this is. So we're gonna wrap it up a little early tonight. And by the way, if you feel like this was a valuable training that would benefit other people, copy the YouTube link from my YouTube channel, Jordan Dream On, and send it to some people. Send it to some people that you think would benefit from it. And you know, um, who knows where that may lead. It'll definitely, I've done this at, I've done this training at uh, a number of events to help the business people in the room build more powerful connections. So with that, have a great week. And uh, if you need anything, drop a question in the comments and I will see you on the beach or in the forest or maybe at the prompting seminar or one of the road tours. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye.